This is a $385 Lego minifigure lot that I won off an eBay auction. And I really need to stop dropping these for the intro, especially when they have fragile stickers on them. <gasps> Come along with me and discover all of the awesome minifigures in this lot. And with packaging like this, I can only hope that this is minifigures and not something completely illegal. FBI, it looks like we're in the clear, we've hit some daylight, and I see some Lego. And if you guys want to see more crazy Lego minifigure unboxings, make sure you guys drop a like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate all the support and enthusiasm towards these videos. Let's get right into this lot. We're going to start off with a battle droid, but not Roger, just Roger. any battle droid. We have the Geonosian battle droid from the Geonosian fighter set of 2004. This battle droid in sand red only ever appeared in that set, and it is probably my favorite B1 Lego has ever made. There's a mock I want to build in the future only using these B1s, but that's going to cost me a good bit considering these guys go for about $30 a piece. This one is sadly missing his 1x2 sand red back piece though. Uh -oh. There are tons of classic minifigures in this lot. Here we have the Hoth Rebel from the 2004 Rebel Snowspeeder. This is one of the first Hoth Rebel minifigures we ever got, and that face print with that red hair is just so iconic. He's just one of those simple yet goaded original Star Wars minifigures. Next up, we have a classic Stormtrooper minifigure, and I just love these guys. It almost looks like they have a mustache due to the printing on the nose there. These early 2000s Stormtroopers are just so awesome. I love them in LEGO Star Wars 2. What are your favorite Stormtrooper minifigures? Let me know down below. Let's keep the classics rolling. Next up, we have the original Young Boba Fett minifigure from Jango Fett Slave 1 in 2002. We all know Jango Fett is also exclusive to that set, so this is a very promising find. Our next minifigure is also from 2002, but he's from Harry Potter. This Draco Malfoy minifigure came from the 2002 Quidditch practice set. I really don't have a good knowledge of Harry Potter Lego minifigures. They always tend to mix themselves into my Lego lots, and I like learning more about them when I find them. Next up, we got another classic, everybody's favorite Wookiee, Chewbacca. This is the dark brown classic Chewbacca appearing in the Imperial ATST, the Millennium Falcon, and the Scout Troopers and Chewbacca minifigure pack. And I don't know if you guys have been taking notice, but these minifigures are in near perfect condition. With classic minifigures this old being previously owned, it's pretty surprising to get them in this condition. Next up, we got another brown guy, but this one is a little bit bigger. This guy goes all the way back to 1999. This is the Rock Monster from the Rock Raiders theme. I love how simple it is it's pretty much one giant piece it's got some studs on top and the arm moves rock raiders is another one of those older style lego themes that people tend to forget exist but we got some really cool parts and minifigures out of this short-lived theme while there are only 11 minifigures total in this theme there is one that goes for over 400 dollars, and that is the chief minifigure only ever appearing in the rock raiders number one mini heroes collection and my god do i want this figure he's stud stash approved and look how cool that teal arm is and we might as well move into another minifigure that has a really unique color. We have Zam Wessel with that beautiful sand purple. She only ever appeared in the Bounty Hunter Pursuit set of 2002. And this is another one just in amazing condition. Let's get a close up. Zam is one of the only minifigures to ever have this sand purple. It's a very rare color and I wish they made it more. And while she is missing that goggle piece that goes onto her helmet there, this is an amazing condition Zam Wessel. She also has the really cool dual face print, one being the shape-shifting form and one being being the Claudite, a super cool and unique Star Wars minifigure, and she sells on average for $50 to $60. And we got even more 2002 classic Star Wars minifigures in this lot. We have the first two original Ewok minifigures from the Ewok attack set. <laughs> These guys literally look like Easter chocolates. I really think you could fool somebody into taking a bite out of these. And you know I had to do it. There's four studs on top of this classic rock monster, perfectly for these two Ewoks. <laughs> These guys just pair perfectly together, just the classic vibe of these Lego pieces, and this would have been super helpful in the Battle of Endor. And once again, these are just in perfect condition, some of the best condition Ewoks I've ever come across. <laughs> You all know that laugh. We've got Emperor Palpatine here. This is the yellow face, yellow hands version appearing in the Imperial Shuttle, Final Duel 1, and the Sith minifigure pack. This palp is just a classic. I love the contrast of black on the yellow. It's such a cool figure. Next up, we have a Padawan Anakin Skywalker. This is the one from Bounty Hunter Pursuit with Zam Wessel. He's got the braid on the front printing of his torso there. Hopefully, we can find his head and complete that figure later. Here we got some assorted parts of Scout Troopers and Storm Troopers with a plain yellow head underneath. Next up, we have one of the scariest face prints I think I've ever seen in my life. This is actually a skateboarder minifigure, only ever appearing in the Skateboard Street Park from 2003. 
Let's get back to Star Wars. Next up, we have the OG Wookiee Warrior minifigure. <laughs> This guy appeared in two sets in 2005, the Wookiee Attack set as well as the Wookiee Catamaran. There are definitely some great minifigures in that Wookiee Catamaran set, and we have some more of them in this lot, including both of the 442nd Siege Battalion Clone Troopers. Of all of the OG Phase 2 Clone Troopers, these are by far the most sought after and most expensive. They sell on average for $50 to $60. That bright green detailing is just so clean on these guys, and both of these are in near perfect condition. I am actually shocked at how good these guys look. Look. I've acquired these in the past and they're not usually in the best condition so I am super pleased to get these two. We've got some more clues from that Wookiee Catamaran set. This is Luminara's headdress. Hopefully the rest of her pieces are in here and we can complete that awesome figure. Luckily our next figure is 100% complete. We have the original Geonosian with wings. This one appeared in that Geonosian fighter set with the sand red B1 that we showed earlier. I really like the look of these older style wing pieces. I think they hold up better over time as well. And this one too is in near perfect condition. I am just so amazed at how well these minifigures have been preserved. In this condition, this minifigure sells for over $40. Next up, we have a Madame Hooch figure from that 2002 Quidditch practice set. And what a cool cape on this minifigure. I don't think I've ever seen one like this with the white stripes. Definitely might be stealing that for a cool custom in the future. And I never knew LEGO made a Mr. Clean minifigure. Just look at this guy. It's gotta be him or it's gotta be the uptighty whiteys guy from Impractical Jokers. But this is about as generic as a LEGO minifigure could possibly get. I don't know if this is just some random figure or if it's a painter or something along those lines, but pretty funny. Our next minifigure is definitely more recognizable we have the obi-wan kenobi from the bounty hunter pursuit set and luckily we do have the chrome lightsaber hilt to pair with him he's definitely gonna need that for when he runs up on zam later the chrome lightsaber hilt is one of the smallest pieces that can make the biggest difference when displaying your jedi minifigures no matter what year minifigure you're talking about the chrome lightsaber hilt is by far better than the standard plastic versions we have now and i think we can all agree that lego really needs to bring these back at some point this next one might take you a second to recognize, but this is the original Droidica. While we are definitely missing some parts, this appeared in the original Gunship with Jedi Bob and the Jedi Defense 1 set. Next, we have another Chewbacca minifigure, but this one is actually different from the one we showed earlier. This is the reddish-brown version, as opposed to the dark-brown version we saw earlier. This one appeared in 13 sets from 2004 to 2016. Next up, we have a TIE Pilot, and this is the one from the original TIE Fighter and TIE Bomber sets. And no, the printed on his helmet did not rub off over time. That is how it's supposed to look. I don't understand how you're supposed to pilot those vehicles when you can't even see out of your own helmet. Next up, we have another absolute classic, the original Yoda minifigure. This legendary minifigure appeared in the Jedi Duel set, the Wookiee Catamaran, and the Dagobah X-Wing. And no, it's not up for debate. This is the best Yoda minifigure that we've ever gotten. I don't see his lightsaber, but at least we've got his cane. And don't worry, I know what you've been waiting for this whole time. <laughs> Our next minifigure is a holy grail in LEGO Star Wars Collecting. We have the original Jango Fett minifigure, only ever appearing in Jango Fett Slave 1 from 2002. And I am absolutely amazed at the condition of this Jango Fett. This minifigure is now over 20 years old, and it looks like it was pulled straight from the box. I am fortunate enough to already have a Jango Fett in my collection, but that one has a big crack in the torso. My original plan was to sell this one to offset the cost of everything else in the slot, but now that I have this one in hand, I don't think I can get rid of it. Of it. it is very rare to come across a minifigure this old and this sought after in this condition. While his rocket pack piece was not in this lot, I have a few of them lying around from other lots. When you're constantly buying used collections, you're always getting miscellaneous parts that are just lying around of incomplete figures. There's nothing better than when I can take parts from an old lot to complete minifigures in one that I just got. In terms of how rare and desirable this minifigure is paired with the condition of it, this might take the cake as the best minifigure that I've ever gotten from a used collection. I will definitely be putting this one in a case ASAP. Keeping up with the classics, next up we have an original Pilot Luke Skywalker minifigure. This minifigure came out as early as 1999, the first year of LEGO Star Wars sets. He appeared in the original Snowspeeder, X-Wing, and AT-AT. Luke's father is not far off. We also have the original Darth Vader minifigure in this lot. This is one of my favorite LEGO Star Wars minifigures ever made. I just love the original Vader helmet mold. The one with this head appeared in the TIE Fighter and Y-Wing set, the Sith minifigure pack, the Final Duel 1 
Battlefront set and the original Cloud City set. I'll never forget finally unlocking Darth Vader in LEGO Star Wars 2 and being able to just force choke everyone in the cantina. Next up we have the original Lobot minifigure. Lobot only ever appeared in one set in the year 2002, the Twin Pod Cloud Car. It's kind of funny that Lobot came in the Twin Pod Cloud Car set and not the Cloud City set. I guess that is the stolen Cloud Car that he used to travel to Jabba's palace on Tatooine. Our next two minifigures definitely belong in the pilot seat though. We have two more rebel pilots here. This one on the left is kind of just a generic one with a Luke Skywalker pilot helmet, while the one on the right is a complete Dak Router from the original Snowspeeder set. Next we have the Green Racer from the Extreme Team. This minifigure came out as early as 1998. The face print of this minifigure is just so cool. I really like the retro sunglasses with the pink visor he's got going there. Next up we have another R2-D2 minifigure. This is the classic one, but it looks like he's missing his legs. <laughs> I have no idea what these next minifigures are, if you even want to call them minifigures to begin with. Yeah, let's just get these out of here real quick. And I know the man for the job. Next we have Charge, the Mission Deep Freeze minifigure. He appeared in two sets in 2004, the Ice Blade as well as the Mobile Command Center. Next we have Red. L-S-T-E-R. We do still have some complete figures in this lot, but this is just some Octane racing parts. Next up we have number four. But here we go, we got another complete figure, we have the other OG TIE Pilot figure. And this one's got the Megaphone Blaster, that's awesome. And I thought that this lot would not be Stud Stash approved, but this guy right here saves us. Well, it's not the right head, this is close enough, we have the original Rebel Engineer or Technician. The Rebel Technician came in that original X-Wing set, and we have a bunch of other figures from that, so I think it's safe to say that it was meant to be that one. 